Okay, so what am I talking about here? Well, I got some algebra stuff, and then I have this statement, don't fail algebra. And of course, that's always good advice if you're in an algebra course, you'd be like, hey, don't fail the course. And some of you out there are like, yeah, that's obviously common sense. Well, I'm gonna talk about um, a specific skill, okay, that you learn in algebra that's so, so critical, so necessary that you understand that if you don't, you're going to end up likely, unfortunately, failing algebra, okay? And nobody wants to be in that position. And it's gonna be related to these three little examples here. Now, if you think uh, you know what I'm talking about, then you know, hold that thought in your brain. I'm gonna get into this in just one second. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, uh, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. I also have a ton of test prep courses. So if you're um, studying for an exam like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, Accuplacer, um, maybe a teacher certification exam, you're taking an exam that has math on it, I likely have a test prep course for it. I also do a lot with homeschooling, I have a great homeschool uh, learning program, and then obviously help those of you that just have a tough time in your current math courses. Now, one thing I must stress that if you are a math student, you must be taking great math notes. Now, if your notes are anything less than uh, outstanding, then you're doing yourself a major disservice in, term, in terms of learning mathematics. So improve your notes and things are going to go better. But uh, you can use my notes to study from if you'd like as you're improving your notes. You can check out uh, my notes by following uh, the links to them in the description of this video. All right, so what am I talking about here? Well, I am talking about this lovely word right here called factoring. All right, factoring. This is extremely important, and as a math teacher who's taught for uh, decades, I would say that every one of, uh, the, you know, um, yeah, probably 99.9% .9 of students who fail algebra, you know, they definitely had a difficult time with factoring, okay? Now, if you think about factoring, let's take, like, the number 20. I said factor 20. You'd be like, oh, that's like 2 times 10. I can go further here. That's 2 times 5. And these would be the prime factors of 20. And that's uh, exactly right. Okay, so this is factoring, but here we're factoring a number. But in algebra, you have to factor these kind of things, all right, these algebraic expressions. And there's uh, basically, um, you know, multiple different skills that you need to be able to factor everything you're going to be facing in algebra. So let's just quickly kind of uh, organize our thoughts, and then we'll go through these problems. So the first is uh, the greatest common factor. You gotta know how to deal with the greatest common factor. Now, if you don't know what this means, I'm gonna kind of show this uh, here in a second in our examples. So you gotta know how to deal with the greatest common factor. This is where you start. This is the first kind of starting point, okay? Now, the next thing is you're gonna look at how to factor trinomials. And there's basically two flavors of trinomials. There's what we call a case one and a case two. Sometimes people refer to uh, these uh, differently, but basically we mean the same thing. So I like to talk about a case one or case two trinomial. Now, uh, after you learn how to factor trinomials, then you need to understand all our special factoring rules. Then once you uh, master that, then you can move on to even group factoring, okay? So this is all the different skills that you need to uh, really be proficient at factoring in algebra. And I'm gonna tell you right now, okay, you're not going to be able to do algebra, okay? Uh, so many of the different type of problems in the units and chapters in algebra without factoring. Factoring is part of the solution process. So this is absolutely required, okay? Now, if you're struggling with factoring, okay, obviously, you know, I'm going to give you some suggestions on how to improve, but you must improve if you're going to pass algebra. So if you're having difficulty in algebra, it's likely you have weak factoring skills. You might understand this, but you might be weak with these things. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at a few examples. And um, so we'll take a look at this first problem. So can you factor this thing right here? Okay, I'm calling it a thing, but uh, basically, yeah, is this factable? The answer is yes. So how do I factor this? Well, 
I could factor out this is an example of the greatest common factor, right? So if I look at 3x, this is 3 times x, and 12 is the same thing as 3 times 4. So they both have 3 as a common factor. Matter of fact, it's the greatest common factor. So I can factor that 3 out, and I'm left with x plus 4. Okay, you notice I'm left with this right here, right there. So I'm not going to turn this uh, into a lesson on factoring. I would just take too long, but just as a quick illustration of the greatest common factor. So this is a real basic, basic problem that illustrates the greatest common factor. So you need to know how to work and factor out the greatest common factor. This is your first starting point when you are learning to factor, okay? Uh, because you're not going to be able to do the rest of this stuff if you don't understand how to take out the greatest common factor. All right, now let's move on. Uh, and I'm not going to cover every single topic, but let's move on to this next problem. And this is a trinomial, right? And to be specific about this, this is a case one trinomial. So my question to you is, can you factor this thing? Now, if it is factorable, you're going to end up with two binomials like this. So the answer here is yes, you can. This is factorable, all right? Now, if you want to try it yourself, go ahead and pause the video. But what you do in this case, all right? Again, this is just a fast, fast review. Uh, this is a 1 in front of this x squared, so it's in standard form. We're going to take that 1, multiply it by this negative 5, and then you just think about the factors of negative 5. Now, this is one approach. Okay, There's another way of uh, factoring these, but again, this is just one quick uh, approach. So the factors of negative 5 is 1 times 5. 1 times 5 can either be negative 1 times positive 5 or positive 1 times negative 5. Now, when you add up these respective factors, Negative 1 plus 5 is what? Well, that's a positive 4. And 1 plus a negative 5 is a negative 4. Okay. Now, if you look here, our middle uh, coefficient is negative 4. So the way you factor these guys, okay, one technique is when I'm looking at these factors, okay, I'm looking at the factors of negative 5, the one that adds up to negative 4, which is the same as this number, that is the answer. So in other words, um, when I factor this trinomial, there's always going to be an x here and an x here. And I'm kind of assuming you know a little bit about factoring. Okay, Again, I'm, you know, I'm skipping over a lot here. But what's going to be in this uh, binomial? Well, here I have a positive 1, so we'll plug in a positive 1. And here's a negative 5, so we'll put in a negative 5. And here are the factors to that trinomial. Okay, so hopefully you found that, you know, understandable. Um, again, this is one technique I like to teach uh, for those students that just really get confused about how to factor trinomials. Uh, but let's move on to our last um, example here. And by the way, again, these are just little sample problems just to kind of see what, you know, you may or may not know about factoring currently. But uh, all these are pretty easy problems and you need to know how to, uh, to, to you know, to be able to handle these basic problems before you move on to more challenging factoring problems. All this stuff is necessary to do well in algebra. Okay, so I got x squared minus 16. Can you factor this? The answer is yes, you can. Okay, and what this uh, is an example of is the difference of two squares. So you're going to be using this a plus b times a minus b. I'm sorry, a minus b, not 4. Okay, so here uh, this is going to be factored uh, like so, right? I'm going to have x. Now, you're basically taking the square root of each of these. Okay, this is subtraction. So the square root of x squared is x, okay? And the square root of 16 is going to be positive negative 4, but just you're going to be thinking 4 here. So this is going to be the same as x plus 4 times x minus 4 in terms of our factors. And if you multiply these together, okay, this is an example of the difference of two squares, you'll see that this stuff, you can use the FOIL technique, will be equal to x squared minus 16. This is what we call a special factoring rule, and there are other special factoring rules you need to know, but we're just kind of covering just one of them. All right, so what's the point of this little video? Well, it's you know really to stress the, the, the critical importance, the absolute necessity for you to understand factoring. Okay, You're not going to be able to pass algebra without you being like very, very good at factoring, okay? So if you've been struggling with it, that's quite normal. A lot of students, um, you know, have difficulty with it. 
but you can achieve, you know, a, um, you know, mastery over factoring through what? Well, you know, one, you're going to have to go back and review. So let me give you a couple of suggestions. One, I have a ton of um, videos on my YouTube channel in my algebra and pre-algebra playlist on factoring. You know, I cover the GCF, trinomials, some special uh, special factor rules. I think I even cover uh, group factoring as well. So that's one approach. You can go back. If you like my teaching style, you can go back and learn. Okay, that's the first thing, right? You got to go back and like learn, you know, just the concepts, right? The second thing is, and by the way, if you need more help, you know, uh, beyond my YouTube videos, you might want to check out like my algebra course uh, in my math help program. But after you learn this stuff, you must practice. Okay, so this is where students really get um, and think that do themselves a disservice, right? They skip doing their all their homework problems, or they they'll do a few problems, they'll get them right, and they'll be like, oh yeah, I got it, I got it. They get overconfident. They, you have to practice this. Okay, it's a skill, and if you're not continually doing factoring problems, it, you're going to get rusty. Okay, and then you're going to run into some algebra stuff that requires factoring. And you're going to forget, and then you know that's not going to be good, right? And then obviously you need to be taking notes so you don't forget, and you can review, you know, how to factor. So again, you know, a lot of this is kind of common sense, but um, I think a lot of students just don't realize how important factoring is and hopefully this little video kind of helped you out and made you more aware and if that is the case please consider smashing that like button uh, that definitely helps me out and if you're new to my youtube channel please consider subscribing i've been on youtube for 10 plus years have over a thousand plus videos basic to advanced mathematics again if you like my teaching style i have a ton of content there i make these videos for you and i'm making uh, new material all the time but uh, my best math help will be within my math help program Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.